Welcome to the How-To Series. The topic for this how-to is teaching requesting. Teaching requesting is an important skill for students with autism so that they can get their wants and needs met. Some of the children you will see in the video will not have a diagnosis of autism. However, the examples all depict strategies and teaching practices that can benefit all students. When teaching communication, there are many skills to teach. One of the earliest skills we can teach that is also very functional is requesting. Simply put, requesting is when a student asks for something he or she wants or needs. We often teach this skill early because it is a very concrete skill and very motivating to students. For example, when a student asks for a goldfish cracker and then they get one, that is only going to support the student to want to ask for something again in the future. We can also teach requesting no matter what the communication mode. In other words, it doesn't matter if the student is verbal, uses sign language, uses a picture exchange system, an AAC device, or any other communication mode. Let's watch our first video. In this video, you will notice the teacher has items that she is trying to get the student to request. While you watch the video, notice how the teacher restricts access to the items until the student requests and then engages with him in activities using it. Ah, maracas! Get them! For me first? Oh, great, thank you! What did you see? Notice how the student was interested in the maracas before the teacher prompted the student to make the request. The student was then prompted to request the items and reinforce with the maracas. When teaching requesting, it is really important to reinforce the student with what he or she is asking for. In the beginning, you may even be reinforcing for attempts the student makes. For example, if you were teaching your student to request juice, you may start by prompting the student to say J, and as soon as they make that initial sound, they receive juice. This is going to help the student be successful and motivate them to keep trying. Let's watch a few more videos about teaching requesting. As you watch these videos, keep in mind the students are learning how to make requests and still need to work on this skill. Notice what item the student is requesting. Also, there are multiple modes of communication you will see. Notice how each mode can still be used to make a request. Finally, does the student obtain what he or she is requesting? As you can see, teaching requesting can be done in many different ways, but there are some important themes you should have seen. The student in each video was motivated by the item they were being taught to request. If a student is not motivated to request the item, they may not do so. For example, if I held up a clothespin and wanted you to request it, you might not make the request because you might not really want the clothespin. Also, hopefully you saw that a request can be made whether the student is verbal or uses an augmentative and alternative communication system, such as a picture exchange system, or a device. Requesting is one of the earliest forms of communication we learn, and everyone needs to be able to request what they want or need, whether or not they are verbally able to do so. Finally, hopefully you notice that each student obtained what he or she was requesting. This is important because if a student requests something and then doesn't get it, they likely won't keep requesting it again in the future. To review, teaching requesting is an important skill for students to learn so they can access what they want and need. Remember, when teaching requesting, you want to have items that are motivating to the student so they want to make the request. Also, make certain to reinforce the student for making attempts at requesting so that they will feel successful and keep trying to make better communication attempts in the future. Thank you.